Do it again. Do it again. How do you again? say turn that damn thing <laughs> off? <laughs> 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 Let's go. project came to EWB USA through one of the San Francisco chapter's volunteers, a woman named Maggie Montgomery. She was studying in Tanzania and Dar es Salaam on a Fulbright scholarship and she met our partner there, a man named Atanas Haule, who is from the village of Engelenge and he was studying uh, for a master's degree in environmental engineering also at University of Dar es Salaam. Engelenge is a very, very far place from San Francisco. It's not an easy place to get to. It takes about a 36 hour plane ride and that takes about two days. Then once you're that uh, from San Francisco to Dar es Salaam, once you're in Dar es Salaam, it takes a 14 hour bus ride to the village of, or the town of Songea. That's another day of the travel. And then the, then the next day, you take a five hour car ride on a dirt track to get to the village. So it's a long way away. It's not an easy place to get to. And the, the way I like to visualize it is, if you take a globe and you put a finger on San Francisco and a finger on Engelenge, you can hold it up with almost no pressure at all. <laughs> the village of Engelenge formed a community-based organization called Engadea, which stands for the Engelenge Development Association. And uh, what they did is, people from the village wrote to family members and friends that had lived in the village and moved to the capital city, Dar es Salaam, and said, we have these issues in the village, we would like you guys to help us. The way the project has progressed, we started with a first site assessment where Maggie went out to the village. She spoke with the village leaders, she spoke with the surrounding village leaders, she spoke with villagers, and got a general sense of what the main priorities in the village. And what she came back with was what the number one priority in the village was a health dispensary. Um, the village had identified two other major needs. One was water, and the other is agriculture. kuangalia kazi ngumu mliyofanya katika kuboresha urafiki wetu We are very excited to be able to help you complete the next step Kwa kubwa kwa kaidia nyinyi katika zone ya kujenga na jenu and have a dispense na kwa na kwamba muweze kuwa na dispensary yetu au za jenu wenyewe Hello sir uh Ngelenge villagers uh, were getting health services from two dispensaries. One is from uh, Litui across the Royal River. This dispensary is run by the missionaries, and when you get services, you have to pay for it. And uh, there's one health center which, where we get all the services, it's government run. We pay just a little. It's far away from here, it's Manda, about seven kilometers away. Uh, usually, people of this area, uh, because they are very close to the river and close to the lake, most of these have uh, uh, water-related diseases. So we have malaria, which is very rampant, uh, diarrhea, and uh, bilharzia. With also child mortality is very high in recent years because there wasn't water for the people to take care of. Yeah. In September last year, 2005, uh, the first team from EWB came. That was consisting of about five people. So we came back here with the team. We went through Songea. We purchased material for the, for the dispensary, the roofing materials, the concrete like cement, the iron bars, and other accessories. So these materials were left here for, for Ngalenge to do the real civil work. So um, what is the uh, estimated time for the uh, dispensary to open? Oh, almost one year. Almost one year? Uh, we have six, year, six months to construct the remaining buildings. That is the toilet, 
in the doctor's house and also the government itself is committed to construct one more house for the doctor. So they've given us almost one year. Close to Ngelenge. So from here to Ngelenge is about 12 kilometers. What are we doing right now? Right now we have a problem with the uh, car. I'm not a problem with the car, but the road is not passable for this car, kind of car. It is a very low dip and uh, the, the bridges. You know, for the shop, the edges. So, The health project, our goal was to do a somewhat comprehensive survey of women's um, water usage practices and also the health of their children and entire families. So we worked with a PhD epidemiologist and designed a 62 question survey based on some questions that we had gotten from the CDC and we made them more specific to Angelengue. And the idea was we would interview women with children under the age of five. Sample questions would be things like, did your child under five have diarrhea last week? What are the illnesses your family had in the past year? Um, where do you get your water? And break that down by where do you get your water for drinking, for washing, for bathing? Um, do people touch the water that's stored in your house with their hands? For what activities do you use soap? Um, and what is the condition of your latrine? The women that we spoke to seemed very willing to answer our questions. Some were even eager that we were coming and would be seeing their house and sitting on their mats with them for a little while for some personal time. We are very successful in collecting data. We now have 147 completed surveys and we're in the process of entering that data into a database created by another volunteer who's an epidemiologist. At that point, once the data is in and cleaned and QA'd, we'll do some analysis on the frequencies of responses to each of the questions, and then maybe try to do some analysis comparing responses to one question to the responses to another question. At that point, we'll write a report summarizing our results and think about effective ways to share that report with both our chapter and Engadea, as well as the village itself, since of course it was a significant contribution by them to sit and answer all of our questions. We're excited to convey the results to them. The second thing we'll need will be the dipper that they dip for the water. Okay. So I'll take three samples of this. Two will be for the membrane filtration, bacterial test, and one will be a confirmatory test with uh, a pathos screening um, where we screen for hydrogen sulfide bacteria. The second sample we take is of the lid of the storage bucket and this is just testing for any contamination that could actually fall into the water um, while it's being stored. So we take a swab and just basically wipe the inside surface of the lid really good around the rim of the bucket just anywhere where that lid's been. A third sample we take uh, is of the hand, um, and we're testing for just like general bacteria that might be on the hand that could potentially contaminate any of the water or um, the food and stuff.
tremendo na majaba niko kera huyo huyo eh And what are, the, what are the effects of the turbidity? What have the people seen that's different about the river? Since the river is very turbid, people have changed their mode of life because they were using this water for drinking and feeding animals. But because of the mining, people fear maybe the mines are very dangerous to them, so now they're using well, so they, they're aware that there's mining upstream and that might have some effect on the quality of the water for drinking. Sure. In Galenge, there are four wells which were built by Concern International. Unfortunately, well number one got dried after only one year. And well number two is still producing water, but the water is having oily substances on it. It's not fit for drinking or for human consumption. Likewise, well number four has some oil substances and is not fit for human consumption. The only well that all the people in the village use is this well number three. That produces good water, good for drinking, cooking and other activities. Today we're going to be drilling a 50 meter, starting to drill a 50 meter um, well. Um, the community already has some um, wells that were built by another NGO um, several years ago, but these are shallow hand dug wells, so a 50 meter deep um, bored well will provide a more reliable and cleaner water source for the community. What kind of materials go or are we used to construct the well? Um, well, they've got a drill rig, which we, we came in from, from the capital, from Dar es Salaam. Um, so we're working with a Tanzanian contractor. Um, and they are using six inch PVC casing, and there'll be a gravel pack um, on the outside. Um, at the top, we're going to put a, a concrete um, base, uh, and there's also going to be a, gonna be a hand pump for now. Um, long term, we may, we may take that and put it um, a, a powered pump with solar panels or wind power. We're still working with cost items and figuring out whether what's the right solution to get you know, the full capacity of this well um, so we can distribute it through the whole community. Okay, we're here in the Falkland sub-village and this is a farming and fishing community and it's too far from the wells in Ingolenge, so we need an alternative source for drinking water. So we looked at a variety of technologies to try to provide cleaner drinking water at, at, in a sustainable way, and slow sand filtration is, is a potential way to do that. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to set up a settling tank to get a lot of the particulate matter to drop out before sending it to the slow sand filter. What happens is water flows in through the uh, pier, trickles down, comes up through the bottom, and then out this uh, valve here. And on the top of the filter is, is this biofilm, which eats away the, a lot of the bad bacteria. And it's a fairly complicated system to keep running in, a, in an optimal fashion. That's why we want to make sure that it works before we recommend it for a, a large scale application here. I've been very impressed with the knowledge base and the education level of, of this community and just their enthusiasm for these projects. Um, I worked in other countries before and I've never seen a community that was this kind of poor and rural but still had multiple people who completed secondary education, um, heavy involvement from the few that had left the community, um, and then people who Complete secondary education still come back and are still living here and, and working here. So they have a lot of capacity to um, complete complicated projects and, and keep things going um, after we're gone. The interesting thing is, even though it's so far away, it takes four days to get there from our homes, the village is so welcoming that we feel at home when we're in the village. It never feels like we're in a distant culture. and it, 
we, we feel very comfortable. They make us feel very comfortable in the village. Whenever we'd walk down the road, we'd have a pack of almost 20 children sometimes following us. They were just so curious and so energetic and so interested in what we were doing. And we really enjoyed forming a bit of a, a small relationship with them. I, I am in fact doing what I've seen. Um, I look into the, the test that they have to take uh, to, to go into a secondary school and I was very impressed with the level of the test. Um, so they do much learning with their modest uh, ways because they really have very little to, to work with. Manile, Avari. Avari. <laughs>